In this video, you're going to learn about electrical field and charges. We need to talk about charges or electrical field. We encounter Coulomb's law. So this states that the force between two points of charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to their distance apart squared. As you can see here, there are represented the distance of separation between your first charge and second charge, okay? So we have the following equation. Your F, or electrical force, is directly proportional to the product of your two char charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance of separation between Q1 and Q2, or charges one and charges two. Or if we're going to further simplify this one, we have your K here as your um, constant or columns constant multiply it with your q1 q2 of already distance of separation squared okay if we're going to simplify your columns constant this gives us one all over four of pi epsilon o your epsilon sub o here is the permittivity of free space Therefore, your columns look can be written as this one. To determine the net force on a charge due to two or more other charges, you must use vector addition. Find the force and direction due to each of the other charges in turn, and then resolve these forces to get the resultant force. Columns law states that the force acting between two charges, Q1 and Q2, whose distances are separated by a distance t is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. The force is along the line joining the centers of the charges. So we have your F here as your constant multiplied with the amount of charges of one and two divided with the distance between your charges one and two squared. Okay, so we have the first example as find the force when two protons are placed one millimeter apart. For B, proton and electron are placed at 10 raised to negative nine millimeters apart or one nanometer. And helium nuclei and electron are one micrometer apart okay so for the first one okay we have your columns constant would be equal to 8.99 times 10 raised to 9 and then we are given with the charges as 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 plus 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 since this is constant for the charge of your protons all over the distance given as one millimeter or one times 10 raised to negative three meter squared okay so your electrical force now would be equal to 2.3 times 10 raised to negative 22 newtons hence this force is repulsion for your letter b th this one okay one all over four pi and you have your permissivity permissivity okay or your epsilon sub o as 8.99 times 10 raised to 9 multiply it with the given charges of your protons, okay, which is constant at 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 times 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19. Okay? All over your given distance at B at 1 nanometer. Okay? 1 nanometer is equal to 1 times 10 raised to negative 9 meter quantity squared. So this gives us an answer of 2.3 times 10 raised to negative 10. So this is in newtons. Hence, these charges are in attraction. So we have this one, 8.99 times 10 raised to 9. This is for letter C. At a given distance of 1 times 10 raised to negative 6. Hence, the charges are the same. At 3.2 times 10 raised to negative 19 and 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 gives us the following. Electrical force would be equal to 4.6 times 10 raised to negative 16 newtons. Hence, the charges are attracted to each one. 
So we have your second question. Find the force acting on a positive 10 microcolumn charge placed 60 centimeter east of a 6 microcolumn charge and 40 centimeter north of negative 8 microcolumn charge. So if we're going to illustrate this in a Cartesian plane, okay, your Q1 as positive 6 microcolumn has a distance of 60 times 10 raised to negative 2 meters between Q, okay, as positive 10 microcolumn. And the distance between these two charges, Q and Q2, as 40 times 10, negative 2 meters apart. So how are we going to solve now for the questions, okay? So we're going to determine the um, electrostatic force between this one. So this one. So the um, labeling now if now as F, Q, and Q1, okay? F, Q, and Q1 would be equal to this one. We have this constant as 8.99 times 10 raised to 9. And then the charge, the amount of charges here, okay? Since this is multiplied with, with uh, 10 raised to negative 6 because your micro column must be converted to columns, okay? Um, to omit now your micro, you have to use 10 times 10 raised to negative 6, okay? 10 raised to negative 6 here, okay? So 10 times 10 raised to negative 6, multiply it with 8 times 10 raised to negative 6, all over the distance between the zoo gives us almost 1.5 newtons east, okay? Although on this problem, you're not going to round up. Okay, for the um, further simplifying the questions, if we're going to do, uh, draw the diagram, the solved one here, since um, the movement of the charge between Q and Q1, okay, your Q1 moves to the east at 1.498333333 newtons. Okay. If we're going to add forces vectorially, we have to solve for D. Um, amount of force here. The amount of force there is equal to 4.495 newtons. And then the force here, okay, the force here would be equal to the square root of 4.495 squared plus the uh, solved force earlier, okay, S squared. Okay, this is FQ, Q1. Okay. This gives us 6.74 newtons. Okay. Now for the direction, we're going to get the um, arc tangent of the forces. Since this is your um, uh, Fy, okay, 4.495, and this is your F of x, okay, force x. So arc tangent of opposite all over adjacent your opposite now as 4.495 all over the adjacent 1.498333. This gives us 3.0, but this is not yet the angle, okay, or the vector angle. To get now your vector angle, arc tangent would, would be equal to this one, okay? Arc, your theta angle is equal to arc tangent of 3.0, which gives us 72 degrees, okay? Now, the final answer would be equal to the resultant electrostatic force as 6.74 newtons at okay, 18.4 degrees T, okay? So we have this one. Columns law, this is again a vector quantity when charges Q1 and Q2 are alike, they repel each other, and when they are opposite, they attract each other. The resultant force on charge is the vector of the individual forces on the charge. Adding forces in this way is an example of principle of superposition. When a body is in equilibrium, the net external force acting on that body is equal to zero. A charged particle can be positioned such that the net electric force on the charge is zero. Set Coulomb's law forces equal and solve for the distance between either charge and the equilibrium position. Okay. 
So we have this superimposition, superposition principle, as you can see here. You're given with the distances of the three charges. This is your hypotenuse. This is your um, sides, other sides of the triangle. The super principle, consider three point charges at the corners of a triangle. Okay. We are given here as your Q1 would be equal to six times 10 raised to negative nine column. And your Q2 here as negative two times 10 raised to negative nine column. And your Q3 here as five times 10 raised to negative nine column. Find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force on Q3. Okay, we are going to determine now the force here acted on three, okay? And the resultant force here, okay? So how are you going to solve it? First, we have to define the problem and identify the known variables. We are already given with the following, okay? The distances between your Q1 and Q2 and Q2 and Q3, namely as this one, okay? And then the angle that is formed here, okay, 37 degrees. So how did we get that? Through your um, trigonometric identities or trigonometric application, okay? Since we are given with the following distances. Now, if we're going to solve the unknown force or F3, okay, we're going to use this diagram. According to the superposition principle, the resultant force on the charge Q3 is the vector sum of the forces exerted by Q1 and Q2 on Q3. First, find the force exerted on Q3 by each and then add these two vectors or forces together vectorially okay, to get the resultant force on Q3. Determine the direction of the force by analyzing the charge. Okay? The force F31 is responsive because Q1 and Q3 have the same sign. Okay, If we have the same sign of charges, they repel same as with your magnets. The force F32 is attractive between Q2 and Q3. Okay, Why? Because your Q2 and Q3 have opposite signs, okay? negative and positive. If we're going to calculate now the magnitude through column's law, we have your Kc, okay? The earlier as your column's constant at 8.99 times 10 is to 9 Newton meter squared per column squared. Multiply it with your charge 3, okay? Your charge 3 here is equal to 5 times 10 raised to negative 9 column. Multiply it with your charge 1, Q1, as 6 times 10 raised to negative 9 column or 6 nanocolumns all over 5 meters okay five meters the distance between here so your f31 now your force 3 1 okay would be equal to 1.08 times 10 raised to negative 8 newtons and then for force electrostatic force f32 okay f32 we have this one three and two so since this is positive and negative the positive moves towards the negative one um, Kc, Q3, all over Q2, we have R3, 2, okay? R3, 2 pertains the distance between your charge 3 and 2, okay? If we're going to plug in the values, this gives us your Kc, okay? This is constant all to throughout your problem solving for your Kc, 8.99 times 10 raised to 9 Newton meter squared per column squared. Multiply it with the um, amount of charge at Q3 at five nanocolumns or five times 10 raised to negative nine columns, multiply it with two times 10 raised to negative nine columns all over the distance between the two as four meters okay, squared. If we're going to finalize our answers, this gives us 5.62 times 10 raised to negative nine newtons. Okay. If we're going to determine now the X components, okay, remember your early physics vectors, Find the X and Y components of each force. At this point, the direction of each component must be, must be taken into account. Since we are given with the angle as 37 degrees, okay, your force F31 or electrostatic force F31 
the component there, fx, is equal to okay, fx, f31, cosine 37 degrees. So this gives us 8.63 times 10 raised to negative 9. And then for the fy component, or vertical component, you're going to use sine. So F3Y sine 37 degrees. This gives us 6.50 times 10 raised to negative 9 newtons. And then for F32, okay? for your F32, since this is um, parallel with your x-axis, okay? so this is already equal to negative 5.62 times 10 raised to negative 9 newtons. This is negative because it's moving towards your left. So your Fy for F32, since this is only in horizontal position or parallel to your x-axis, gives us zero newtons. It has no vertical component. Okay? To calculate the magnitude and the total force acting in both directions, this gives us the following. If we're going to um, sum your forces, F of x would be equal to this one minus uh, 5.62 times 10 raised to negative 9 newtons. This gives us 3 times 10 raised to negative 9 newtons. And then for the Fy total, okay, 6.50 times 10 raised to negative 9 newtons plus 0 newtons is equal to 6.50 times 10 raised to negative 9 newtons. Okay? So to determine now the um, magnitude of the resultant force, you're going to get the Pythagorean or the um, simplified the square root of the square summation of individual square of your forces as f of x total squared plus fy total squared. This gives us the following values as 3.01 times 10 raised to 9 newton quantity squared plus 6.50 times 10 raised to 9 newtons quantity squared, thereby simplifying your answer to 7.16 times 10 raised to negative 9 newtons. Okay? Let's proceed with your electric field. A resultant force changes motion. Many everyday forces are pushes or pulls between bodies in contact. In other cases, arise between bodies that are separated from one another. Electric, magnetic, and gravitational effects involve such action at a distance forces and to deal with them, physicists find the idea of a field of force, okay? or simply a field. So we have your field strength here. Okay? Fields of these three types have common features as well as important differences. An electric field is a region where an electric charge experiences a force. If a very small positive point charge Q, the test charge is placed at any point in an electric field and it experiences a force F. Then the field strength E at that point is defined by the equation E is equal to F all over Q. Okay? Your electrostatic force all over the charge in columns. Okay? That pertains to your E, which is your field strength. The magnitude of E is the force per unit charge and its direction is that of electrostatic force of the positive charge, okay? Field strength A thus A vector, okay? If F is in newtons and Q is in columns, C, then the unit of E is the newton per column and C is negative one. A commoner but equivalent unit is volts per meter per second. Volts per meter. To determine now the net field strength on a charge due to two or more other charges, we must use vectors, find the field strength and direction due to each of the other charges in turn, and then resolve these field strengths to get the resultant field strength. Remember that the direction of a field is the direction in which a positive charge move. Remember, okay, I repeat, remember that the direction of a field is the direction in which a positive charge would move. Positive charge would move. Usually in a system for this one, the positive charges are move. Okay? The field between two parallel plates can be calculated by the following. We have this one, your electric field strength A is equal to PD across the plate 
or this is in volts per separation of plate distance in meters, okay? So charges all over the distance. So volts all over distance. What is the electric field strength at any point in a regional field? Okay. In the diagram, a point charge Q produces the regional field and a small positive test charge positive Q placed in the field as shown. Okay. So we have the following relationship earlier as this one, your um, electrostatic force equal to Coulomb's constant, multiply it with the product of your two given charges all over your distance of separation between these two, two charges as R squared, okay? So your electrical field strength is equal to KQ all over R squared, okay? So we have the field patterns and like field can be represented and visualized with electric field lines, okay? As you can see here, the same goes with your magnets, but here we're, we are focused with the um, electric charges. Now remember earlier, in this example here, on the topmost figure, your left, the movement of charge usually is from positive to negative. Remember that, positive to negative. The positive ones are always optimistic to move towards the negative ones. Okay. So this ends my presentation. For further question, you may inbox me through my messenger account or our LMS inbox. So have a nice day.